feel like God's prepared me to gather new faces for new spaces uh, by giving me a heart to see the church become a place where open and honest dialogue can happen. I think a lot of people outside the church have become tired of a culture of division that seems to have even infiltrated the church in general at times as well. Uh, the other day I was having breakfast with a young man who, uh, when he moved to Dallas about a year and a half ago, was struggling with whether or not to go to church anymore. He had left Alabama, his home state, just kind of disappointed with how simple things like questions or doubts or uncertainty weren't really accepted in the churches he grew up in. And so I think being able to welcome in new faces means we've got to be ready for whatever people think, believe, say, feel. Uh, many of them are not going to be where we are, so to speak. And so we have to be willing to open our arms up and not see us as ministering to them, but rather walking alongside with them as we all try to grow closer to Christ in a deeper, more meaningful relationship with Jesus. I love how the bishop is always calling us to invite someone that we don't know to meet the God who already knows and loves them. And so I was thinking about that and I realized that new faces are those people that I have not yet met, but that God is already wooing and willing into a place of welcoming grace. And I love to welcome people. I love people. And I, I love the idea that um, new faces reveal the face of Christ. And when we are encountering Christ, then we get to welcome and receive Christ in that individual. We're always called to make room for Christ in our, in our hearts, in our lives. And so how much more will we need to make room for new people when they are revealing Christ to us? Just this morning before I came over here, I was thinking, how am I gonna answer that? And so I had to get out of my office to, to think about it. And I went to the Waffle House in town and I was sitting there drinking my coffee thinking about this very question and this this man whom I've never met you could tell was kind of a regular of the place walks over to me and says tell me about why you're wearing orange Chuck Taylors and and I said well my my nine-year-old daughter's favorite color is orange and for for her birthday she wanted orange Chuck Taylors and and our birthday is the same week so she wanted her daddy to have the same Chuck Taylors, and so I have orange Chuck Taylors, and he said, I can tell you're a man of the good book. You're a good daddy. And then he just sat down and proceeded to just go all over the map, from being a surfer in California, to being a youth pastor in the 70s, to where he is now, and, and his son needing a kidney transplant, and I'm just sitting there listening. And he says, finally at the end, you know, a man my age, it's good to just be listened to. And I'm sitting there thinking, why am I trying to come up with some sort of catchy, cool idea of new faces and new places when this is how you do it? It's just getting out of, of the places we are and, and meeting people we never would have met anywhere else. So the Pulitzer Prize winning artist Kendrick Lamar has a song on his most recent album called Fear. And one of the last lines of that, he says, wondering if I'm living through fear or through rap. And I take him to mean in that line that he's really addressing the tension between living through fear or living through a creative authenticity of his art form. And that's been on my mind uh, in light of this question because I truly believe that God is awakening me to inhabit the space of creative authenticity and to make that a really central hallmark of my ministry, wherever geographical spaces I go out into. For me, that means being um, real with regard to the things that are wrong in the world and the church, not sweeping evil and injustice under the rug, but really addressing them. And it means being real about the importance of the church as a place of belonging for people of all ages, nations, races, sexualities, and abilities. And that idea of creative authenticity also reminds me of what Paul says in Romans 12, um, where he says, let love be genuine, because it's that genuine love that I receive freely from God and that I'm able to reflect, at least in part, um, that really helps me to, to be a creative, authentic presence in the ministry. I've been, I think God's been preparing me my whole life to gather new faces for new spaces. Um, just particularly in my self-care, 
journey that I've engaged. Um, I was a chaplain at Children's Hospital for clinical pastoral education. And the work that you do there to care for yourself so that you can care for others has been a primary um, means of God working in and through me to meet people where they are. I think uh, what's been really formational for me has been getting a chance to be a part of the community at Union Coffee House, a part of their worshiping community and seeing what God is up to there. But something that's been really theologically formational for them and, and therefore for me has been uh, this idea that comes from one of John Wesley's sermons called On the Omnipresence of God. He talks about how God is present in all things. And then he asks this question, he said, what should we make of this awful consideration that God is present in all things? Should we not labor continuously to acknowledge his presence? And I think that's what um, meeting new faces and being in new spaces is all about, is acknowledging that God is already at work there and being willing to say, yes, God, and partner with God in whatever way that means. I hope that God continues to empower me and open up opportunities for me to create a space of belonging for the world. Uh, Howard Thurman wrote that it's a strange freedom uh, to feel adrift in the world of humans without a sense of anchor anywhere. I believe that the church can and should be that anchor in the world, um, especially as we all grow together in the holy, loving freedom of Christ. Uh, and for me, that means nurturing places in which people can know that they belong to God and belong to one another. And to throw Mother Teresa in the mix too, uh, she said that if we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to one another. And so in the midst of whatever else I do in my life, I hope that I can boldly follow Jesus into creating and cultivating these spaces of belonging. Well, Paul says something in Philippians about he is daringly courageous um, to believe that Christ will reveal his greatness within Paul's body and life. And I hope to be daringly courageous to believe that Christ will work in and through me in spite of my very worst days, um, that God will accomplish in me more than I can imagine because I am a broken vessel and yet the Holy Spirit will be able to do things that I, can, I can't even imagine right now. But I do know that there are so many people who have spoken into my life and helped shape and move me to the place that I am that God has, has empowered to do so. And I hope that I might be able to impact someone's life, um, to draw them closer to God and to be in relationship with our wonderful, loving, gracious God. Why do I feel like I'm, I'm called to ministry? Well, you know, um, it was, it was the writer Ivan Illich who said, how do you, how do you change society? Is it, is it violent overthrow or is it gradual change? And he said, neither. It's, it's to tell an alternate story. And I think that, that my, my hope is to, is to tell an alternate story, but really tell a, a true story about, about Jesus Christ, that, that sin is real, its effects are catastrophic, but that grace abounds and that we can be exemplars. I think for, for me, most of my life was, was in the John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. But I've come to learn through friends and mentors that that's only the first half of the gospel. That the second half of the gospel is 1 John 3.16. It says, uh, we know that Christ loved us because he gave his life for us. So then we ought to love our brothers and sisters in the same way. And so I think for me, that call was that, that I heard the first half of the gospel, and then I've been called to, to live the second half of the gospel. And as a good friend says, once we begin to, to live the second half of the gospel, a hurting world will come to believe the first half of the gospel. I hope that God will work in me and in my ministry in such ways that people will come to know the one who is love intimately, uh, that they would know God as love, uh, experience that as themselves, but experience that uh, in their neighbors and in the world around them. And I hope that uh, God will just surprise the heck out of me too uh, and do great things far beyond my wildest expectations. To grow 
in that area of, of nurturing self-care for other people. Um, I hope to, to grow particularly in the skill of listening because I think that's a primary way to uh, meet people where they are. I think it's a way to overcome a lot of the opposition and polarity that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope that through my ministry, um, I hope God could lead me to be a preacher who teaches the Bible in a clear and compelling way and teaches Methodist Wesleyan theology in a clear and compelling way. Um, I hope also that God could lead me and inspire me to um, take important stands when it's needed. I think we live in a time and day when the church needs to have a voice and frequently people look to their pastoral leadership to uh, speak up when they see injustice in the world around them. That can be hard to do, but I think it's important. I hope that, that God can lead through uh, my ministry uh, in a way just to keep it real. I think uh, sometimes there's this culture that, that sees church as this buttoned up place where we have to smile and pretend that everything is perfect. And I hope that I can always establish a culture where uh, we can bring our real selves into church. Uh, we can tell people when life is not going well, when we had a terrible week, uh, when we don't feel like smiling, when we can bring those kinds of things to God and to our sisters and brothers in the faith as well. I hope that God can lead me to be a past to be a pastor to uh, foster a church where authenticity and real life is accepted, embraced uh, together.